joining us by phone, Miss Liz Sheridan. Liz, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. How's everybody? And where are you? We are in Billings, Montana. Billings, Montana. Yeah, it's kind of the uh, the old west here compared to where you're at this morning. I bet it's pretty there, though. It is pretty, and it's a nice day. Everything's going well for us. Good. Yes. Yeah, so for people who don't know, they're thinking, the name Liz Sheridan. They might not recognize that. They'll know you, obviously, through all your work. One, more recently, a pretty good gig for you, Seinfeld's mom on Seinfeld. Yes, that was a good gig. Yeah, people, <laughs> people love that one. What was it like working with uh, Jerry Seinfeld? Is he a pretty good guy? Yeah, he is. He's uh, uh, the the set was wonderful because there were no fights, no uh, arguments, no you know, uh, no. <clears throat> everybody helped everybody else. <clears throat> Excuse me. No problem. No problem. What about you, Liz? Are you uh, are you in a relationship now? Or are you out there finding love? <laughs> Well, uh, my husband died about, oh gosh, 10 years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. And uh, I have not uh, found a boyfriend yet. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're open to the possibility? I don't know. I hate to say on the air because then Mark says I'll, I'll get all kinds of weird phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. People will start sending you letters. <laughs> yeah. Showing up at all your premieres just to meet you cuz they you, they think you want to date them. Yeah, I know how that could be. Well, uh, I get a lot of email <clears throat> from all over the world. That's uh, cuz I send out pictures. Mhm. Uh-huh. Stuff like that. Do you do any of the uh, the new technology stuff, the MySpace, the Facebook, the Twitter, any of that stuff? No. Because I don't know how. Yeah, it's a little it's a little complicated. I mean, for for the young generation, they were kind of you know they've grown up with it. But I mean, to learn it would be kind of complex to understand. I don't even know how to what is it you text or. Yeah, texting on the phones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's too much. Just get a typewriter and send it in the mail. It works just <laughs> as well. <laughs> we were talking before we went on the air here about a story that really interests me. You dated James Dean back in the day, right? I lived with him. You lived with him. So you guys had a uh, relationship, and you even wrote a book about it, Dizzy and Jimmy, My Life with James Dean, A Love Story. Yes. That's awesome. It's it, what's the story like? I mean, is it kind of? I mean, did you guys have some crazy times, or was it just a, a normal relationship? We had great times. Um, I was living at the rehearsal club in New York, which was a. Um, I think the theater guild sponsored it for young ladies who wanted to be in the theater or music dancers, you know, all sorts of like that on Fifty Third mm-hmm. in New York City. And um, somebody brought him home. <clears throat> we had this strange kind of funny sense of humor and we were attracted and we he borrowed my umbrella that means he had to come back and yeah. he did. and uh, and we went up the street to Jerry's bar which was a place where all the actors went it was a restaurant cafeteria kind of place it just became uh, we didn't want to be apart so we did what you didn't do in those days and we uh found a place and lived together. Wow, that's got to be exciting. Was that James Dean that we know? I mean, like the the famous James Dean, or was this before he really hit it big? Uh, before he really hit it big. Okay, so this was when you you, know, you were both kind of breaking into the business. Yeah, I was a dancer. <clears throat> and he, uh, he opened on Broadway in a show that lasted, I think, See the Jaguar was about... Uh, I think it lasted two days. Wow. <laughs> I guess, yeah, you got to have some knocks like that before you really hit it big in Hollywood or New York or anywhere. I was talking to somebody the other day that was a big, big James Dean fan. I had a friend, and I knew he was a huge James Dean fan, so I brought it up that I was going to be talking to you, and I said, you know, yeah, she uh, she lived with James Dean back in the day, and the friend told me, I thought James Dean was gay. Oh, God. I hear that so much. Yeah, I'm sure it's like, I, and I Googled it on the internet, too, and I saw that, I mean, it's a kind of a, a common rumor out there, so I figured you'd probably know better than anybody. I mean, what do you think all that hubbub is about? I don't know. I love that word, hubbub. Um, <laughs> it was, it, <laughs> we lived together, we slept together, we had sex together, we, I washed his dirty underwear, uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> so it, it didn't seem gay to you? No. 
and uh, that's it. It's interesting. I mean, where that like rumor would have come from. I mean, and I guess nobody was saying that he was gay, like that he only was into men. They were just kind of saying he was more bisexual and that he would, you know, had male lovers and female lovers and just didn't really discriminate sexually. But, well, I don't think so. I But then again, I don't know. I know that he, uh, Rogers Brackett, was uh, one of the guys that uh, he came, well, he came to New York by himself but he started on a, on a, from Los Angeles with Rogers Brackett because Rogers had a lot of influence mm-hmm. and couldn't get him work on Broadway. And uh, Rogers, uh, I don't know, uh, tried to, what's well, in the book, tried to, you know, uh, well, he did. <laughs> he gave in to Rogers Brackett. And uh, when they were in Chicago, he ran away from him and came to New York all by himself. Okay. Because he couldn't stand doing that. Yeah, so it was kind of, I mean, he was trying to advance his career, so he was doing some things with yeah. that, that in mind that probably weren't necessarily what he normally would have done. Which made him ra- rather unhappy, and yeah. Ex- interesting, interesting. I'm, this story is fascinating. I mean, you said that you guys are working on a screenplay to turn this into a movie, hopefully? Yep. That would be very exciting. It's got my, me- na- my name is Dizzy. Excellent. So you've got me... Did you, you know that? Dizzy and Jimmy. Well, my sister, when we were younger, couldn't pronounce Elizabeth, and it came out Dizabeth. So ever since I was in a little tiny child, everybody in, everybody in school, everybody called me Dizzy, and still does. And so that's when you were with James Dean, you called him Jimmy, and he called you Dizzy? Uh-huh. That's a sweet little couple there. What happened when the uh, when the relationship ended? Did you, did you guys just go your separate ways, or was it a rough breakup? <clears throat> no. Um, actually, at one point, it's in the book, it, uh, he went to the store to get some cigarettes, and uh, he called me from the store and asked me if I would marry him. Wow. And I said, well, yeah, but not now, because we don't have any money, and blah, 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 blah. And he came back, and, you know, it, it, it was serious. We were serious. Mm-hmm. And then he got an agent, Jane Daisy, and I met her. <clears throat> um, then he started getting a uh, couple of TV shows, and he did that one show on Broadway that only lasted a night or two. Mm-hmm. Um and then he had to come out here because uh, some people wanted to see him, movie people. Mm-hmm. And he wanted me to come with him, and I didn't want to be a tag-along. So I very grown up. I was very grown up at that time. That's funny, I went to, to Virgin Islands, and I lived there for, oh, God... Virgin Islands and San Juan, Puerto Rico, for about 15 years. Wow. And so just during that time, you guys just grew apart and the relationship ended. Well, he wrote me some letters. Okay. And he, you know, wanted me to come out there and he would help me be a dancer out here. And I, I turned him down. What an exciting, exciting story. An exciting life, really. I can't wait. I really hope you guys get the uh, get that all finished up and get that turned into a movie because those movies about people's lives are huge these days. And James Dean is one of those guys that kind of nobody's really recreated, you know, his story recently. So I think that'd be a, I think it'd be a big hit, too. I hope so, but it's more my story than it is his. Yeah, that's true. It's It <laughs> definitely is. I'm sure you've got a, a lot in there, too. And also, I mean, you have a very interesting story. I'm sure people now want to see you in something. They probably have a, a hankering for some Liz Sheridan. And you can see her in Play the Game, the movie with Andy Griffith and Doris Roberts, a bunch of other funny, talented people. And it opens here in Billings this Friday, so you can check that out. Liz Sheridan, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Can't wait to see the, uh, the Dizzy and Jimmy movie, and I uh, wish you only the best so thanks so much for joining us this morning thank you you're very enthusiastic thank you have a good one bye bye the big j show weekday mornings from 6 till 10 on billings number one hit music station hot 1019